Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo. And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no. Next on Hiki no, stories from across our island chain. How you know if it's home is if it's your sanctuary. The residents of a homeless community in Waianae bring us new insights into the meaning of home. An ace volleyball player navigates the restrictions placed on athletes who transfer schools. Students at Kalani High School introduce us to a new twist in 3D printing technology. And speaking of innovations in technology, we'll revisit Eva Mackay Middle School's high-tech PE program. We'll follow a mule train deep into Haleakala National Park. And we'll find out how a volunteer at the Honolulu Zoo is keeping it in the family. All on this episode of the nation's first statewide student news network, Kiki No Can Do. We're here in West Oahu in Waianae High School, quite possibly the only high school in the United States with a football field right on the beach. Waianae High School was founded in 1957. The school's mission is to build a collaborative learning environment and culture that emphasizes responsibility, innovation, complex thinking, effective communication, and excellence. Increasing and strengthening relationships, communication, and accountability are all emphasized for students and staff. The following story by the Hikino students at Waianae High School is about a special group of people who found an interesting solution to the ever-increasing homeless problem in the state of Hawaii. For me, it's a community. It's not just an encampment. Yeah, we all watch over the area, the kids, make sure everybody's okay. Yeah, this place is about, you can come rest your head and you know you're gonna be okay. Each morning, 19-year-old Adam Naki has something to do. You gotta haul your own water. You gotta make sure you buy your own generator so you get electricity for charge all your things. Do I say bring me the right? Always cleaning, 24-7. Adam is homeless. She has moved 12 times before finally settling here at Hale Aole in Waianae. While situations like this aren't ideal, residents believe it's a good place. Yes, this community needs to be united to function well only because living in this community, coming together, everybody has to get along. According to the National Alliance to End Homelessness, Hawaii has the highest number of homeless people relative to their population. It's an issue that has divided the state for a while now. That's the problem, is there's not enough Section 8 vouchers, there's not enough public housing units, and there's not enough you know, low, low cost rentals out there. So people end up just cycling back, and then they're back homeless, you know, back in the shelters. There's no one reason why people fall into homelessness. They um, you know, had an unexpected situation happen in their life that just tipped them over the edge um, where they were no longer able to financially support themselves or their family. Is that a game? It's not easy to find a solution to this ever-increasing problem, but so far, Hale Aole's residents have been making the most out of their situation. For instance, a person were to move in. They had no place to go. They would come here, they would talk to my mom Twinkle, and they would, my mom would find them a spot. They would put up their tent. If they need help putting it up, we would come in and help them with that. Over several years, residents have been building their homes from the ground up. In many cases, it's become the foundation for something more than a fresh start. They've been encamped there for quite several years now. You know, one thing that's, just, that's good about it in a way is that they're self-policed to some extent. To me, you gotta set morals out here. It's no different than being in a house. Our material is different. Yeah, it's not a wooden structure, it's made out of material. Until the state can come to a consensus about the issue of homelessness, Haleo Ole is doing as they see fit. So far, they've been allowed to stay. When you have more people come out and everybody functions together and they work together and they go out there, at least you're gonna be heard. One for all and all for one. For now, this is Adam's place, somewhere she can temporarily call home. How you know if it's home is if it's your sanctuary. If you feel that you want to be there. Hi, Tom. 
This is Diamond Tuisano from Wine High School for Kiki No. Kiki No is now on Instagram. For show updates and a peek behind the scenes, follow us on Instagram at Kiki No Can Do. Our next story takes us to the Salt Lake District of Oahu, where students at Moana Lua High School reveal the challenges faced by student athletes who transfer schools. I get a rush every time I play. It's just because the adrenaline, you know, pumps through my veins. And it's kind of a state of euphoria because I just play a sport that I enjoy. And the nature of the sport is just so competitive. And all of that combined is really crazy. Zachary Miyamoto has a strong passion for volleyball that has led him to transfer from St. Louis High School to Mwanalua to play at a more competitive level. Mwanalua stood as a school that was very good in its academic and athletic. The coaches here are just so good and they sacrifice so much to serve like us as players. And the players over here are also very good and very dedicated to the sport. Believing his old school meant he was benched from playing volleyball for one year. The Oahu Interscholastic Association, or OAA transfer rule, states that students that have played a sport in the previous year and transferred to a new school are required to sit out a year in the same sport they played in. They now have to really plan it ahead of time. It's bad in the sense that if uh, they ever decided, oh, this may not be for me, and they wanted to transfer and they wanted to, you know, maybe something happened, it, it becomes very restrictive for them. And for Zach, the rule made the decision oh a lot harder when transferring to Moanalua High School his sophomore year. That rule kind of made me rethink everything and missing out my sophomore year of playing was a big deal. As a player who really loves the sport, it's, it was really hard to transfer because I knew that I would be missing out on a lot. Well, Zach is driven, but at the same time, he also was coming to the school again for the academics. Mm -hmm. So he knew he was going to, um, you know, it was one of those decisions. His love for volleyball pushed him to transfer, which meant having to cope with being benched for a year. It was very, very hard. It also hurt us because, like I said, he's a good player and not having him be able to play was um, a downfall, but at least we'll have him this season. I just told myself, you know, it's going to be worth it. I was like thinking to my junior year, like, this is what you have to give up to come to Moanalua. Now in his junior year, Zach realizes the sacrifice of giving up his sophomore year was well worth it. It's crazy, like, I haven't played school volleyball in so long since my freshman year. Having him, it was just makes things so much smoother and it just helps us a lot. In the case of student athletes like Zachary, it seems like nothing will hold them back from doing what they love. I like keep thinking like just seeing us like at the OIA championship or at the state championship, like being able to get that title and that chance actually being there for me to, you know, grab it, it's really cool and I still can't believe it right now. This is Madison Badua from Wanalua High School for Hiki No. Stay tuned after the show to find out what students who created this story learned from their experience. Aloha. We're here on the campus of Kalani High School, a public high school located on Kalani Ole Highway between Kahala and Aina Haina in East Honolulu. Kalani High School opened in 1958 to sophomores of the first graduating class of 1961. Kalani serves part of Kapahulu, Kaimaki, Kahala, and Aina Haina. Falcons are known to be very welcoming and homey. A transfer student when he first arrived commented that Kalani High students were very nice. Other students have commented that Kalani High, in addition to being academically strong, also has stellar extracurricular activities, such as its boys soccer team, which this year took first place in OIA Division I championships. The following franchise piece by the Hikino students at Kalani High School is about how to use a laser cutter. Kalani High School engineering students are involved in building 3D models through the use of laser engravers. They've created a variety of objects and cutouts to create crafts and mechanical objects. The laser printer is a modern tool that transforms 2D drawings into 3D art. 
By using laser beams and specific directions, you can cut out, engrave, and etch images into various materials such as plastic, wood, paper, and much more. In order for your design to be processed by the laser printer, special software such as Coral Draw is required. Configure the page layout to align with the laser printer's measurements, then draw out your design. Once you're ready to print, you can adjust the power and speed settings of the laser to create precise cuts and add depth into your image. Place your material in the machine and use the rulers to adjust the position to match your dimensions from the computer. Press print and watch your masterpiece come to life. Unlike the 3D printer, which builds your product layer by layer, the laser printer cuts out pieces that you can assemble. These tools are not only used to create crafts, but are also a door to the growing possibilities technology can provide, starting with 3D models pieced together by laser printed cutouts. This is Anya Carroll from Kalani High School for Hikino. Now let's see how technology is changing the face of physical education in this story from the Hikino Archives by Eva Mackay Middle School. With the rise of technology in our lives, many feel physical education is stuck in the past. But the Eva Mackay PE department has taken a whole new mindset and thinking to challenge their students. I thought it was going to be more sweating and more playing outside. Um, I really thought that PE was actually going to be kind of torturous. Technology does help students learn. And so for some, um, they need to hear it. Some people need to see it, some people need to sing it, some people need to um, write it down. And technology allows that. Technology gives many avenues to learn. PE tends to be the most athletic kids do well because they can demonstrate it. And then you have somebody with no skill, no experience of it, and now they're expected to do that same skill. But now with technology, maybe they can't necessarily perform it, but they can express it. You know, whether it's through song, whether it's a PowerPoint, whether it's even seeing themselves. Merging physical education with technology allows all students an equal chance to express what they have learned, making the focus less on the physical aspect and more on the educational aspects of PE, such as taking interactive notes and using heart rate monitors to control the speed and time at which they exercise. Uh, I think the most helpful piece of technology would be our heart rate monitor unit uh, done by Mrs. Combs. She's able to track her student's progress daily in terms of them working out in their target heart rate zone. The heart rate monitor can be something done outside of class. You don't need a lot of fancy equipment and it can keep you healthy aerobically. You know, our PE program here, we don't focus on traditional sports and we want students to be lifelong, healthy, and productive citizens. And I think just exposing all of our students to different pieces of technology. I believe the technology that helped me the most was when we took videos from the iPad because when I reviewed them, I knew what I was doing wrong. And the next time when I was ever to do that same activity again, I was sure not to do that same mistake again. I think about PE after using technology is like more easier and simple because then later on in the years we can look back to what we've learned. The Eva Mackay PE department has helped students learn a new way to stay healthy by combining traditional sports with new technology. This is Faith Borges from Eva Mackay Middle School for Hikino. We are here on the campus of Seabury Hall in the Paniolo town of Makawa, Maui. In 1958, Catherine McGrew Cooper bequeathed her home, Mount Alay, to the Episcopal Church to be used for an all-girls boarding school. Seabury Hall's mission is to prepare students for successful university work, move students to develop mind, body, and soul, and cause students to realize their responsibility to community. Now, over 50 years later, Seabury Hall is a day school with an enrollment of 440 students from grades 6 through 12. The following story by Hikino students from Seabury Hall Middle School is about the dependable mules of Haleakala. Haleakala National Park on Maui has been using mules since the 1930s. The crater was designated as a national park in 1916 and 
It is protected by the Federal Wilderness Act, which states, an area where the earth and its community of life are untrammeled by man. There shall be no temporary road, no use of motor vehicles, no landing of aircraft. Well, we use mules here in Haleakala because Haleakala is a designated wilderness. So um, there, it, there, in general, there's a restriction. There's no motorized vehicles, motorized equipment period allowed. During the 1930s, the trail system and the wilderness cabins were constructed by the Civilian Conservation Corps. The mules carried all of the lumber and all of the food and supplies for the crews that built the cabins and the trails. Almost a century later, Michael McKinnon, the current animal caretaker, is preparing to lead his mules into the crater on a 28-mile round-trip journey. What do you say, Lefty? He and his co-workers are packing supplies to maintain the cabin and assist in conservation projects. Like I can pack lumber, I can pack plants. Anything you can throw at me up to a certain point, I can, I can get in there on the back of the, backs of the mules somehow. If you want me to take something into the, into the backcountry for you, I'm going to do it. I can cruise in there faster than you can hike. My, my riding mule, Jake, will move out about four miles an hour. Help mule, help. Good boy, Jake. Head up, mules. Get up, Toby. Get up, Jake. Haleakala is known as one of the quietest places on Earth. To minimize noise pollution, which disturbs both people and native species, the park strives to use mechanized vehicles as little as possible. Upon arriving at each cabin, there is work to be done. Unloading supplies such as gas tanks and wood, and assisting other park workers in the rat eradication program. The eggs of nanny birds, an endangered species, are threatened by rats. In addition to traps, the mules have carried in native plants such as ule, aali'i, and ahinahina for transplanting. It is late in the day when they reach their last stop at Paliku. The dependable mules have once again brought the supplies safely and quietly into the crater. The following day, they make the long journey back across the crater, then up Hale Mountain Trail, then back to base camp. This is Ennis Asher from Seabury Home Middle School for Hiki No. Welcome to Sacred Hearts Academy, an all-girls private school on Oahu, located in the heart of Kaimuki. We not only take great pride in our beautiful campus, but also in our school's rich history. The Academy was founded in 1909 by the Sisters of the Sacred Hearts. It is at an exciting time in its over 100 year history as it continues to pursue its mission of offering outstanding single gender Catholic education to young women of the 21st century. Currently, more than 900 students grace its campus enjoying a variety of programs, extracurricular activities, and technology-based classes. The following feature by our Hikino reporters captures the story of Daryl Bolosan, an Academy sophomore who annually dedicates more than 200 hours of her time volunteering at the Honolulu Zoo. Life's a zoo for Daryl Bolosan. The zoo is like a second home. With both parents, longtime zookeepers at the Honolulu Zoo, the Sacred Hearts Academy sophomore says she's grown up around animals. Hi, Brooke. Hi, Dante. As a child, Daryl participated in the zoo's educational programs. And now, she's a volunteer. I work with the kids at the zoo camps during the breaks, and I just watch over them, just teach them about conservation and about enrichment that the animals get. You guys see what orangutan hand looks like? Daryl has logged more than 200 hours of volunteer work every year, coming in during school breaks and sometimes even weekends. She puts a lot of time into it. Um, she comes before the pogroms actually start to help set up the pogroms. Oh, I'm very proud. <laughs> he keeps her out of trouble. And just knowing that she's doing something, learning something, and 
Like I mentioned, maturing as she grew up into, into this environment. Both of her parents have been working at the zoo for over 20 years. Her dad is the elephant keeper, while Daryl's mom takes care of the reptiles. So I've been taking care of them for about the last 15, 15 years. For Daryl, it's about giving back and carrying on a family tradition. It's like passing on the things that my mom and dad taught me about the animals. I'm sorry, a emu. The zoo actually made my family. My whole life is here at the zoo. Started here and continues to be here. Animals definitely did bond us. Just knowing about animals, discussing the animals at, at home or at work. Through her volunteer work, Daryl not only learned about animals, but also about herself. I enjoy working with the children because it helps me break out of my comfort zone. Its name is Pepe. It has helped me with my social skills because I don't enjoy talking to people and it just helps me open up. She's always willing, no questions asked, and she actually enjoys her work. Daryl has won numerous school awards for her dedication to the zoo. <laughs> But she says her experiences and lessons learned are far more valuable than any recognition. This is Celine Arnabit from Sacred Hearts Academy for Hiki No. Well, we've come to the end of this episode of Hiki No. Remember, all of these stories were written, shot, and edited by students like us. We hope you've enjoyed watching them as much as we've enjoyed sharing them with you. Stay tuned after the credits to find out what some students learned about working on this show. More proof that Hawaii's young people hiki know. Can do! Stay tuned after the credits to find out what students learned from their hiki no experiences. What really worked was that she was strong in my weaknesses and I was strong with her weaknesses. In the Hikino story volleyball transfer, I was the reporter and the writer. In the volleyball transfer story, uh, the student, Zachary Miyamoto, was transferred from St. Louis High School to Mauna Loa High School. And because of the school transfer rule, he wasn't able to play at Mauna Loa his sophomore year. Ronel Panarigan was the cameraman as well as the editor. What really worked was that she was strong in my weaknesses, and I was strong with her weaknesses. Vernell's a really good filmer, and he does um, help script, so that's really nice. And he's a really good editor, too. He can edit pretty fast. Her script writing is important to my editing because uh, that's her strength, and that's my weakness. So it kind of helps me a lot, because if it, this was by myself, um, I would struggle. And so that's where they were really they learn to really work well with each other and bounce off ideas and build upon each other because they learn that you know it's just them two it's a small group and so they really got to work hand in hand to to create a, a really good and appealing story i guess when Renault's editing i just kind of sit on the side waiting for him if he needs any help or like i'll listen to the sots to make sure that they make sense i'll make sure that the um B-roll is relevant to what the script is saying. I'm kind of like just the supervisor in a way, I guess. It allows me to help him, but without doing his own job. I think the Hikino process, or just you know the story making process in general, is probably the most important thing that they will do in high school.
because it's taking whatever is learned, applying it, and learning even more because they're applying it. Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no.